Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Your Career Digital Webinar. Um, we have a series of presentations for you today that will be covering uh, the career options and the retraining opportunities that exist in the region. Um, and you can find out more about what's happening um, for uh, us to be able to accelerate the provision of these across the region um, uh, and uh, across different sectors and retraining areas. Um, we do have some limited time today, so please, if you do have any questions, use the questions field in the GoToWebinar control panel that should be in front of you, and they will be collected and, uh, and presented and gone through at the end of the, uh, of the session today in the QA section, which will happen once the presentations are finished. Um, so there's not, not, not much else to say otherwise, other than to look at the agenda and see who we've got presenting. Um, I'm the chair of the local uh, digital skills partnership, so I'm very pleased to be here and uh, to, to go through this with you today. And I hope you get as much out of it as participants would have got from uh, producing this stuff for you today. Thank you. So we'll move on to the first presentation from Rachel Evans um, around NCS and what they can offer learners. Hi, good morning everybody. <clears throat> My name is Rachel Evans and I'm the Employer Engagement Manager for the National Career Service for West Midlands and Staffordshire. Um, and I'm wanting to talk to you this morning about um, how you can benefit from the National Career Service um, and what that actually means to you. Whatever the stage of your career, we can help you. Um, and it's really to enlighten you as to as to actually what, what services and what support is available to you um, and, uh, and, and run through that. So if I could go on to the next slide, please, that would be great. So, the National Career Service, how can we actually help you? The National Career Service offers free, impartial and personalised advice and guidance to help you make career decisions, and it's available to anyone over the age of 19. That doesn't matter whether you are working or not working, um, whatever your circumstances in life are, if you are over the age of 19, then the National Career Service is, is, is open to you for that support, information, advice and guidance, and, and it is a free service to you. We can help you uh, make decisions about your future. It's very important to know what's, what's out there and what is actually right for you, especially in the current um, situation with the current pandemic, a lot of people are making changes about what they, they may want to do with their lives career-wise and it, we can help you understand all the different options that are available to you and how you can potentially look at retraining or, 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 or just moving into a different role. There's lots and lots of different um, avenues open to everybody and the National Career Service can, can point you in the right direction and, and help you understand what those avenues look like. So whatever stage you are at in your career, we can help you understand what your skills are and what skills you might need to adapt to new jobs, circumstances and opportunities, and we can help you achieve those. Not only that, but the National Career Service can help you with your applications. You only get one chance to make a first impression and it's very important to make that count. So there are many, many options open to you when thinking about your next steps, and we provide information, advice and guidance to help you make the best decisions on learning, training and work as well. There's ongoing support. You can be with the National Career Service for up to 12 months. So it's not just one meeting, you know, and that's it. Literally, we will handhold you through your journey to support you. That may be in retraining, that might be in helping you um, source um, job opportunities. We work with a lot of companies and organisations to promote their opportunities to our customers. So, so it really is, you know, by, by um, engaging with the national and registering with the National Career Service, we can give you a lot of access to, to jobs and training opportunities and this ongoing support you know, whatever the stage of your, your life or stage in your career that you are that you're at. Can you go to the next slide, please? So what does that actually look like in terms of, of, of how we help you? So the National Career Service website has various tools to help you understand and realise all your skills and, and to highlight the potential roles that you may suit. So you may be unemployed, seeking a new role, you may be working, but seeking a new or a different role. You may even be happy in your current role, but you want support to develop your skills further, to actually progress further in the company and to enable you to, to enhance your career development. So we can provide you with careers advice um, and career change guidance as well. We can help you with effective job searching. 
Now that may be, um, as, as often the case now, is, is through the online media and social media. So some people are very au okay fait with that and completely um, comfortable with using different media. Some people need more support in that and they may be nervous about and, and, and not understand how to use um, job boards and different social media to help them in their job searching. We can help you and support you through all of that um, to, to, to lead the way as a guiding light for you, basically. We can help you identify your transferable and job specific skills. There are numerous tools on the National Career Service website to help with this and also your dedicated careers, qualified careers advisor can help with this as well. They will also help you create a professional tailored CV and a covering letter. I mentioned about making that first impression count. Employers today want CVs a lot of the time and so quality is essential. They will be interested in individuals who take the time to tailor their CV to a role rather than a scattergun approach where the same CV is just submitted for numerous roles, but it, it, it's not relevant necessarily to those roles. So you have to make it relevant and we can help you to, to do that. We can help you, as I mentioned, with using social media for job searching and for recruitment purposes. This could be Facebook, Twitter. A lot of organisations are using these social media applications and social media routes and platforms to highlight and promote their job opportunities. A lot of people use LinkedIn. And again, we can help you setting up profiles on LinkedIn and understanding how to use them, how to get the best out of these tools to help you in your journey. We can help you with completing application forms and personal statements. You need to make them count. You need to take your time and it can take a while to do these. So we, you know, we will help you think about each one of those carefully and, and, and walk you through that to get the best chance of succeeding in your applications. The same thing applies with interview preparation and mock interviews. A lot of these interviews currently, because of the pandemic, are virtual interviews and, and, and automated interview systems. Quite a lot of companies are using the automated system, which can appear unfriendly and, and um, perhaps challenging if you've never dealt with that before, but it's quite a useful tool for companies. So we can help you understand what that looks like and, and, and what to expect so that you're not um, a nerd. So you, you, you actually present yourself to the best possible in the best possible way in these types of, uh, of automated interviews. We can even do mock interviews with you. So as again, to help your um, confidence so that when it comes to um, actually attending interviews, you, you are a little bit more confident in your own ability and, and what you're looking for and how you can present yourself. We will help you in learning new skills through formal and informal training. Again, this could be accredited training opportunities. Um, it may be different support, advice and guidance. We can even help you with well-being training. You know, if you've been furloughed and you've found that um, you know, it's been quite challenging from a health and well-being perspective, we can also help and support you with that as well. The National Career Service is there for you every step of the way to, to really you know, help you in your current situation, but also in your journey, your career journey moving forward. Apprenticeships. There are hundreds of apprenticeships in the, um, the West Midlands today, across the whole of the West Midlands. Numerous opportunities, and we can help you understand which ones potentially are best for you, what, what may suit you um, the most. Apprenticeships on, you know, that are not limited to uh, to age. Um, uh, you know, it's not a young person's um, opportunity only. Apprenticeships are open to everybody. In fact, people may be working in a role and still be able to undertake some apprenticeship uh, opportunities. So it's, it's important to understand what those look like and, and how they can actually help you and benefit you. If you are interested in voluntary work, but you don't really know how to go about finding that, various different websites that you can look at, but we can also help you navigate those and, and help you source the um, voluntary opportunities. And it can be a really useful way of trying a sector or trying out a role before you decide to apply for roles in that sector. You know, you might want to dip your toe in the water and just try it out first. And again, through the current pandemic, quite a lot of people have taken that opportunity and, and actually had a, a complete change of career because they found that they've had it, they, they've used it as an opportunity to try something new and, and, then, and then found a new career path for themselves. University courses and applications. Again, regardless of age, university courses are open to you. It is not something that is limited to a specific age range. So university courses and applications can be challenging. 
Again, you've got personal statements and long application forms to complete, but the National Career Service can handhold you through all of that um, to, uh, to make sure that you make the most of your application. And then information on other organisations we can also provide to help with specific queries. That might be on self-employment, might be on coaching, might be, could be various different things. Um, you know, you, you can come to the National Career Service and talk to us about what you want to know and what you want to understand. And we will listen to you and provide you with this information, advice and guidance, all free of charge um, to help you on your journey. Um, and uh, provide you with opportunities, whether they are training opportunities, whether they are vacancies, job opportunities. We are in touch with hundreds and hundreds of companies and training providers across the West Midlands, and we're keen to put you in touch with them and to give you the opportunity to benefit from, uh, from those um, jobs and, and those uh, training opportunities to help you. If you'd like to go on to the next slide, please. So, how do you get in touch with the National Career Service? If you want support, you need to get in touch with one of our career advisors. As I mentioned, they are qualified careers advisors and they're there to help you. They'll discuss your strengths, your skills and your ambitions. They will help you consider all of your options, as well as provide you with the information, advice and guidance and support that is, is what you need. And, you know, yours for CVs, for interviews, whatever that might look like, particular support tailored to you. We will help suggest different steps that you could take and they will discuss with you what, what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with and, and support you through all of that. Um, giving you information about your local labour market. That might be, you know, especially in the current pandemic, who is recruiting in particular, what sectors are growth sectors? You know, you may be thinking about a particular role and there may be limited opportunities in, in, the, um, in the area or in your local area, but we can help you with that and help you understand what that looks like. We can help identify opportunities to support your goals. So all of that is available through the National Career Service with one of our qualified careers advisors. So to make this happen, you need to call the helpline and speak to an, an advisor, ring 0800 100 900. And our lines are open from eight in the morning to 10 at night, seven days a week. Calls are free from landlines and most mobile numbers as well. So it's really down to you to actually you know, pick the phone up, get in touch with us. Um, you can do that through the National Career Service website as well. But basically, please do get in touch and we will be delighted to help you and provide you with the, the support that you need to help you on your career journey. If anyone's got any questions at all, I know we talked about um, uh, the um, chat function for, for if you're wanting to um, ask your questions. But if anyone does have any questions at the moment, I'm more than happy to answer any of those um, currently if, uh, if, if anyone would like to ask me anything that's fine brilliant thanks very much rachel that was uh, that was great and i was having a look at the website in the back there there's a huge amount of information on there as well which is um i hadn't actually yeah. seen before it's quite um uh, yeah. staggering amount of support available it is a lot Super. of people aren't aware of the national career service to be honest matt it's um it's, <laughs> it's huge there is such a huge amount of support and help available um and yeah. it's free all of it is impartial obviously we're not we're not paid by any organisations or training providers or anything like that. Um, it's a government yeah. funded organisation. Um, so it's completely impartial and there is huge amounts of support available for people. They've just got, yeah. to, just got to get in touch. Yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. So we're going to move over to Lee Jones now, no relation. Um, and she's from Microsoft and she's going to tell you about what's on offer from them. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Lee Jones. I'm the digital skills lead here at Microsoft in the UK. And that means that I work with uh, lots of organizations, uh, central government organizations, local authorities, to really help um, support you as individuals get the skills that you need. And I work for a global company, Microsoft are a name that most people will recognize. But I just want to give you a little bit of a scene as to how I got here and my journey. So I grew up in Manchester and on a council estate. I uh, lived in a single parent family, so we didn't have many opportunities. And at the age of 11, actually, we were evicted from our house and we were moved into a homeless hostel. That seems worlds away from where I am now working at a tech firm um, focusing on digital skills. But I tell you that because actually, 
it doesn't matter where you're starting from. So we'll have people who are listening now and you'll be unemployed or you'll be furloughed or you won't really know what it is that you want to do in your life. And what employers want is they want people who are motivated. They want people who have drive and determination. You might not have the skills. You might think that technology is way out of your reach and it's not something that you can do. But in actual fact, anyone starting from complete scratch can get skills that are going to help them move into roles that are really going to give them a fulfilling life and opportunity. So I say my role actually is empowering people and transforming lives. Because at least if one of you watching this now goes away and looks at some of the information, does some training and it helps you moving forward, then I've done my job. So what I wanna do is um, I'm just gonna jump around and show you a few things that we have at Microsoft because we've got a huge commitment now to help people get digital skills. And we did some research um, and within the next, uh, within the next few years, so by 2025, there's going to be an additional, additional 3 million tech jobs in the UK. Now that might not necessarily be within a technology company, it could be within a manufacturing company, construction, it could be within an organisation and they have sales roles, etc. So I want you to think about the opportunities that are out there that aren't necessarily specifically tech, but that you'll need digital skills to have. You know, we're sat here now, we're talking through a computer. Um, you'll have to, you know, you have to log on, you have to kind of access websites, et cetera. And you'll need all of those skills for any job that you have moving forward. Now, I'm not talking about artificial intelligence and robotics and all of those things. Surely they will be opportunities for people if you're interested. But I'm talking about some of the fundamental skills that you're going to need. So I'm just going to share my screen. And what I'll do is I'll show you a few things that we have. But if anyone's got any more information, then we're going to share all the links afterwards. Um, and by all means, if you want to reach out to me, I'm on LinkedIn and I'm super happy to speak to people. So I'm just going to share my screen now. And I'm going to pop this down here. So let me get rid of myself. Okay, so as I mentioned, we've got a huge focus at the moment on how we can help people with skills. And at the back end of last year, we launched an initiative that identified the top 10 in demand jobs and we created free learning paths aligned to those jobs. So on here, and again, we'll share the links afterwards, it gives you an idea of the top jobs that employers are looking for at the moment. So again, you can see some of the roles, a techno technological software developer data analyst, but a lot of them are project manager roles, sales roles, customer service roles, digital marketing roles, roles that anyone irrespective of where you're starting from, can actually learn the skills for and find opportunities. And I'm gonna click on one of the um, learning paths here. So if you were looking at becoming a customer service specialist and you're not really sure what a customer service specialist does, then you can just do this foundations course. And it's about an hour's worth of content. You can go on there and you can understand what it is. You might be interested and therefore you can do the next ones. So make sure that you actually check out uh, those resources. The other thing that we have as well is we have um, virtual learning sessions. Every single day we have a team of individuals who are delivering workshops. So if I click on here around working more effectively, it'll tell me all of these different workshops that I can join. So sessions today, two till three, understanding the technology, really getting a bit of a deep dive into the different things that you potentially will learn, uh, you'll need to learn when you're moving into a career. So again, they're free resources that are completely available for you to join. You just click up, uh, click on to the actual section and then you will register on that section. So again, making sure that you are taking this opportunity now while you have time to get as much training and as many skills as you possibly can. Because like I say, employers aren't necessarily looking for um, 
they're not looking at CVs anymore. They're looking at people that have skills and you have the opportunity to get the skills. Every single one of us has that opportunity. And irrespective of where I sit now within my career, I still don't know what I want to do in the next two years, the next five years. And there's so much opportunity ahead. And I want you to really kind of consider that. And one of the other things that we um, that we really talk about is how do we connect people into jobs? So we can talk about all these skilling opportunities, but ultimately, where are you going to find jobs? And as was mentioned before, there's a huge, huge opportunity when it comes to apprenticeships. So we have a website which basically pulls together Microsoft um, certified apprenticeships. So if you're looking at a digital uh, opportunity within a company where you get accreditation, then we have this site and you can go onto the site and you can actually look for opportunities. So I click on it will then take me through to the jobs that are available and it will tell you the amount of money that you will get. It will tell you what level it is for the apprenticeship. And what you find is that people who take this path, irrespective of whether you're a young person coming through um, school or college or whether you're an individual who's been in the workplace for 10 15 years and you really want to look at changing your career this entry level um, route through the apprenticeships is a great opportunity to get you started within the tech industry and again it could be that you're working as a technical apprenticeship but within a manufacturing company so really think about what it is that you're excited about what it is that inspires you and look for opportunities that are aligned to that because there's some brilliant opportunities out there um, and again like i say it's just making sure that you're looking for them using the services uh, and the national career service and all of those other things as well to help you to get into the roles that it is that you're looking for and then the last thing that I want to cover, actually, is at the end of this month, we have something uh, called Digital Skills Week from Microsoft. And we run these every quarter. And the whole objective is actually he to help people like yourselves to understand what the opportunities are within the sector, help businesses to think about um, how they need to bring new individuals into their organisations. So on the screen, you can see that actually we have sessions available on the 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th and 30th of the end of this month. And these are super, super practical sessions. So again, how do you get the skills for the jobs? Setting up a LinkedIn profile. You know, people and employers are looking for individuals now on LinkedIn. And if you don't have a profile, you're missing out on those opportunities. Again, prepare for interview success and building CVs. So really practical sessions that you can actually look at um, when you're thinking about the opportunities that, that it is that you need. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen now because um, I basically want just to kind of give you a little bit more of an understanding around organizations. So within any organization and within Microsoft, one of the things that we really value is diversity. So again, it doesn't matter where you come from. My background doesn't necessarily um, suggest that I would be working in an organization, a tech company. However, what I bring to the table is a different view and a different perspective. And every single one of you have a different view and a different perspective. So make sure that you use that as a strength and that you really articulate that when you are looking at moving into those career opportunities. Um, as I said, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that anybody has. I'm going to hand over um, to Lucy Rose and Ben now, and then obviously they're going to talk to you around some opportunities that you can get involved in if you're looking at moving forward to those careers. So huge thanks to everyone. Um, and if there's anything else that you need, then obviously please do reach out to the WMCA, the teams, um, or ping me. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Uh very interesting stuff. Again, a huge wealth of resources. Um, we, we've got a couple of questions that have come in, which uh, we're just going to pause for a moment and attend to uh, for Rachel and probably for you as well. Um, so uh, just looking through the questions at the moment, uh, the two that we're looking at really, which is one, where can I find out about apprenticeships available in the West Midlands? And um, the other one was, I'm thinking of running my own business. How can the National Career Service help me to fulfill my ambitions? Okay, so I'll, 
I'll pick up on the uh, apprenticeship piece. So if you if you go to the apprenticeship connector on there, you can actually put your postcode in. And what it will do is it will um, surface apprenticeship opportunities within the regions. One of the things I want to yeah. point out though is that even if you're even if you're in the West Midlands, you can work for a company based anywhere. If you're working via your device and your computer, effectively you have the opportunity now to work for a company that's based out of Europe, based out of America. So as much as we want people to think about how they can add value to the businesses across the West Midlands, you can still access those opportunities and bring that value into the West Midlands by working for companies that are outside the region as well. So again, make sure that that's something that you consider. Um, and again, from an apprenticeship perspective, then Rachel will have more details on different services that you can access. Yeah, no, absolutely, Lee, you're very much so. And you've hit the nail on the head um, with regards to location. When you look at a lot of opportunities that are being advertised now, um, so many of them are you can work from home, you can work remotely, because um, th there was previously quite a lot of suspicion about whether people would, you know, whether it worked, whether companies would allow individuals to work from home, um, you know, over over previous years. But in the last 12 months, 18 months or so, with the pandemic, um, it, it, companies have been forced to, to, to enable people to work from home. And it works. It works really, really well for companies. People work very well and are very happy working from home, working remotely. And the technology that we've got with support from Microsoft and, and other um, uh, you know, uh, organizations is phenomenal to be able to actually access, like we are now, Teams meetings, different you know, event rights, different webinars, all sorts of different tools and platforms that are available. But they can be a bit <clears throat> unnerving for people to get their heads around. So the National Career Service can obviously help with that. As far as the apprenticeships are concerned, there is the government's apprenticeship site. And again, if you contact the National Career Services, if, if the apprenticeships are of interest to you, please do get in touch with the National Career Service um, and they will be able to um, support you in um, you know, actually understanding what the um, apprenticeship route is that's, that's best for you. Literally, you just need to, to ring 0800 100 900 or go onto the National Career Service website um, and, um, and we can get you in touch with a qualified careers advisor who will literally have a one-to-one -one appointment with you, a session with you that's sort of an hour, hour and a quarter to talk all about what you're looking for. And that may be apprenticeships whilst you're with them. And it's a virtual appointment currently. They will actually handhold you through and, and talk to you about um, apprenticeship opportunities. They'll do it for you, with you at that time. So, so there is a lot of... Um, uh, support um, a, a framework, a, a huge framework around you know what you can do and how we can help you through the National Career Service when you're looking for apprenticeship, apprenticeships. There's a question that we've had about running our own business and again the National Career Service can very much help you with that so that's a really good question, thank you for that. Um, you know it, it, we need to understand what those ambitions are because you've said whoever's asked that question has said to help me fulfill my ambitions so what we would want to know is um you know we would discuss with you during your meeting with the national career service qualified careers advisor what those ambitions were um and um and then what um what you need to put in place to enable you to fulfill them and we can again point you in all the direct the right direction and put you in touch with the right people because you need to potentially look at funding you need to look at um legal um guidance if you're looking at setting yourself up as your own business you need some sort of financial structure in place um and um you also need to understand even the simplest things like who your target audience is what do you actually want to do and and you need to know that there is a need for that and we can help you um how you go about assessing that and establishing that so that you make sure it's the right business that you're setting up that there is that need for it but when you have your own business there are a lot of pieces in place um to make that happen um it isn't just a case of yes it's me and this is what i want to do you need to have a business plan in place you need to understand where your money is going to come from how you're going to generate income um you know and and um and funding for that and all of that the national career service can 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 help you with because we have contacts with the appropriate organizations that you would then need to talk to it isn't one person it isn't one one solution for everybody it's a tailored solution for what you're looking for so the first step is to get in touch with us have an appointment with us and let us understand what that goal is what your ambitions are and then we can steer you and, and advise you as to who to contact and we can actually you know find out those people in your area and give you some suggestions whether it's on the finance the business plan side whatever that might be we can support you with that 
So it's a really good question. And anyone that's thinking about running their own business, absolutely, in your first first port of call should be the National Career Service so that we can we can help you. And at, at any given time, when when you're setting your business up, you can you can still have support from us. It's all free support. So it's we're we're sort of like your silent business partner almost. You know, it's it's there. We're there to help and, and nurture with you and and support you. So absolutely, give us a call um, or go on the National Career Service website and get in touch with us in the first instance. And that that's what you need to do first. And then and then we can literally help you every step of the way to fulfil those ambitions. And, and we'd be delighted to to do that for you. I hope that's answered the question for you. Yeah, brilliant, Rachel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, just, uh, we've had a question about the questions uh, and the links that we've been posting into the chat about whether they'll be available after the session. Uh, we will send out an, an email to everyone that registered uh, with those um, resources included. So don't worry about having to scribble those down or cut and paste them into Notepad, uh, they'll be there. Um, great, so thanks very much for that. Um, we're now gonna move over to Lucy Rose Walker, um, who's gonna tell us about the exciting School of Code. <laughs> thanks, Matt. Hi everybody, I'm Lucy Rose Walker and it's my colleague Ben Lee from School of Code um, and we're just going to give you a short introduction this morning about who we are and what we do. So School of Code was founded um, by Chris Mia back in 2015. He recognised there was an, an opportunity to get more and different people into technology um, because there's a massive tech skills gap that we've we've heard about and talked about this morning. And there was um, a, quite a big gap between what was being taught in academia and what was actually potentially needed in industry. Um, and there was also quite a lack of diversity within technology as well um, and within the industry. Um, and as Lee Jones uh, mentioned earlier, things like different views, different perspectives, people from different backgrounds coming in and being part of technology. So he felt like he wanted to open up this opportunity to everybody um, to become um, a developer um, in technology and to be able to learn that in a, a quick and easy way and one that had essentially no barriers to entry. So created um, a 16 week free intensive boot camp that took you from no knowledge of coding um, through to becoming a junior web developer. So kick that off with um, cohort one back at the very beginning. Um, and we have now taken four cohorts through about 150 people um, through to becoming um, junior web developers. Many of them moved on to, to other roles um, since then. Um, but we now are working with um, a, a cohort who have just done a C sharp uh, web development course um, and guys before who are on a part time course. The thing that's quite unique about School of Code is that not only are we teaching you the skills to become a developer, but we're also teaching you how to become part of an agile team. So to really be able to hit the ground running when you go in and, and start working in that new role. Um, and that can be a variety of different roles. It's not just um, software engineer. And, and Ben's going to touch on that a little bit as well. So we wanted it really for the courses to be industry led. So we make sure that we work closely with industry um, to make sure that our courses are, are up to date and are providing the knowledge and the skills um, that people need. And um, as I say, as well as the, the sort of coding skills, those kind of um, softer, more human skills like problem solving and critical thinking, teamwork, what happens when the team doesn't work, doesn't blend, and um, how to get over those challenges, which has obviously been really interesting as we've gone from a classroom based um, setup to now um, an online setup. So our last cohort just finished um, today, in fact, there's 30 of them and they all learn um, over the 16 weeks um, on on Zoom, very similar to how we are today. <clears throat> so how are we free? Um, well, we have the fantastic backing of the, the WMCA to put um, everybody through the course. And then we also have a number of sponsors. So at the moment we're working with Purple Bricks and Zynga and Natural Motion. And then what we do is we work with um, our employer partners to help everybody on the course to get into the role that suits them afterwards. 
So we have a number of different people, Santander, Bravismo, Wealth Wizards, a whole um, raft of different employers who we work with um, after the course to then place people specifically into roles. So you might get the opportunity to interview for a number of different um, roles that take your fancy, depending on what you've liked during the course. We have an average age of, well, no average age, because we have anybody from 18 to 63 on the course. This has been our stats to date. Um, and we get roughly about 85% of people who come on the course into jobs. So we've got, as I say, 30 people finishing today. So over the next three months, we'll be placing them into roles. Um, and as was just touched on before, those roles um, predominantly have been in the West Midlands because they have been face to face, but now the opportunity to work um, in jobs um, across the UK and further afield um, is also things that we're seeing. Um, and we have a, a, all different demographics of people and different backgrounds, uh, again, which Ben will touch on. Um, and we have 50-50 um, male-female split um, across all of our cohorts as well. So I'm going to hand over to Ben. He's just going to tell you a little bit about his own story because he's not only been on the boot camp, but now runs the boot camps. Um, and just to give you a bit more detail about what we actually do and the potential jobs that you could go into after that. Over to you, Ben. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Ben and uh, I'm a, a coach here at the School of Code. And uh, a couple of years ago, I was a musician. I'd studied like music at university and was um, you know, just kind of making ends meet, playing uh, playing the guitar for a living and was looking for something, uh, just to, looking for a career really somewhere with bit, uh, the potential to to grow and uh, live the life of a real human. Uh, so I uh, applied for the School of Code and had my own uh, fantastic uh, experience uh, doing it. Now, two years later, I am a teacher here and uh, helping, as Lucy Rose said, uh, many more people uh, on their own uh, transformational journey. Uh, and yes, we mentioned already that we have, uh, we've currently got a part-time going. We've also just finished another intensive, but our main offering is this 16 week uh, intensive, life-changing transformational journey into tech is what I've written down. Uh, and I, and it is true, uh, rather than the, the slow, uh, you know, do it by side, uh, this, our approach, I guess, is not for the faint hearted. It is the plunge pool, uh, getting you into, into tech, uh, and, it's worked uh, for a lot of people. Uh, it's uh, um, uh, what we try and do is we try and get people to become an autonomous uh, learner in themselves. Uh, and so we work in teams, uh, get you to solve problems, uh, get teach you the right skills so that you become, uh, you know, able to just take take the bull by the horns uh, yourself. So the course, as I said, is uh, the main offering is the 16 week uh intensive boot camp so it's like nine to five um at the moment it's uh it's all over zoom um but that doesn't stop the fact that it is very uh team based and i'll get on get onto that in a sec uh what do we teach well technically uh we are a full stack web development course uh and so that means that we teach like the fundamental technologies of the web so html css javascript that client side stuff we also teach you how to develop servers and the back end, the inner workings of the web. Uh, and we've done boot camps with Node.js as the background. We've also done boot camps with C Sharp as the background, as the back end uh, for that. And by the end of the course, you, you will know how to build full stack applications. You'll be able to solve real world problems uh, with that uh, technology. Um, but that's just the start, really. That's like, that's what we teach is how we teach it. That is uh, the, the interesting part for me. It's heavily team-based. So from day one, you're working in a pair or you're working in a team of four. Uh, and that's uh, not only are you embedding your technical skills, but you're learning how to work with other people. Uh, and as, as Lucy Rose said earlier, um, the, 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 the gap between what the industry needs and what academia produces uh, can sometimes be quite stark um, because people aren't ready to work uh, in uh, in in the industry in an industry way they're not um they don't have the 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 skills totally relevant to the industry but not saying that they don't learn lots of great skills and some people do come out with good so i'm not totally dissing it but what we try and focus on is uh that ability to work in cross-functional teams and just slot in 
so people from all different backgrounds, as we said, we want trying to get more and different people into tech, uh, but taking their background, adding, uh, you know, the skill, the language of technology, both technical and uh, team based so that you can slot into a, a technical team. Um, we are industry focused. Uh, and so we have mentors, we've got a strong uh, School of Code community active on our Slack channel and uh, uh, you'll see us uh, around at various events like this one. Uh, but we've got mentors uh, that, that support each boot camper, so that is an industry, someone from the industry to mentor each boot camper. And then we have guest lectures several times a week uh, from people in industry, in industry. So it's like keeping those skills as relevant as possible. And that's the advantage of being a boot camp. We've got a 16 week turnover if our uh, our syllabus is 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 up to date with what industry is actually doing where it actually goes and i've only been here two years and i've already seen huge iterations on what we're teaching uh, and how we're teaching as the the rise and flow of uh, of the demand uh, gets uh, you know happens types of jobs people go into uh, so this is an interesting one yes we are teaching full stack web development but uh, Although the majority do go into front-end, back-end, full-stack development roles, we also have people go into QA roles, like quality assurance, uh, DevOps, uh, which is like a really growing uh, field in most tech companies, user experience, uh, design, project management. Uh, we've had people go into all of those roles. Um, and that's because we teach it. We teach the technical uh, skills, but with layering on the way we teach it working in teams, uh, that's uh, you get you gain all these other skills uh, too, and we 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 introduce you to those. And some people just run with these different blocks depending on uh, what your what your skill set is. The course is hard. Uh, it's it's an intense period of personal growth, uh, and it was it was a lot. It was a game changer for me because I'd kind of felt like I was coasting since um, since A levels really. Just kind of I know I, I had things that I wanted to get get going and get going good, but it was just like really great to throw yourself into an educational environment as an adult. It's so much more fun than when you're a kid. Uh, and that's actually a good a good thing. Fun, I have written down fun. Because, uh, because it's hard, um, we buffer that pain with a lot of fun. Uh, and, uh, and I don't know, the best laughs are when, you, when, you, when you've just, uh, you know, when you've achieved something and you've like, you've worked for something. Uh, so that's that's a really big part of it for me is like, you know, having the ability to laugh about things as well as being serious uh, and learning lots of stuff. So when the course finishes, um, we do have uh, the interview process. We handle all of that. We've got our employer partners um, and we we get you a job. Basically, we try um, and throughout the course, we talk to it as many businesses as possible. We get they sign on. And they say, OK, we, we want these roles. And then we'll we'll hook you up. We've got currently our, our recruitment partner, Mortimer Sphinx, also helps with that. But we've got an in-house team that is uh, that is there to get you get you jobs. Uh, and I think How that's pretty. Get in touch, Ben. I think um, yeah. if we're just wrap up now. I think we're uh, <laughs> nearly getting there. Unfortunately, we don't have any boot camps scheduled at this moment in time. But if you follow us on all our social channels. Um, then you will be able to find out when we have the next one coming up. Um, so thank you very much. That's us. Brilliant. Thanks, Lucy Rose. Thanks, Ben. Um, I'll be in touch knowing that you've had a C-sharp bootcamp. That's right up my alley. So um, I'm very glad to hear that. That's brilliant news. Um, so next we have um, a presentation from um, the NIO Enterprise Bootcamp, who are going to tell us about um, what they've got to offer as well. Hi everyone, good to um, be here today. My name is Lau Liu, I am co-founder of Neo Enterprise and I'm going to speak to you a little bit about what we do in the Neo network and what opportunities are available to you. Um, so we are passionate about economically empowering black women um, by using technology as a tool to do this. Next slide please. Um, so we are on a mission to be the number one destination for black female disruptors globally and right now we are expanding our digital boot camps um, at a very fast rate in order to make sure that we're giving um, black women opportunities, especially in tech. Next slide please. 
So for us, we know that um, oftentimes there are different barriers that affect, especially women of colour, from getting into um, tech roles. And our aim is to equip and train black women or black female talent who are at risk of unemployment or um, career changes. And so we believe that being able to upskill and train black women will help them come out of income poverty and also give them opportunities to fill skills gaps within organizations. Next slide please. So we've identified a few um, uh, what you could call barriers. So about 40% of UK black households are currently in income poverty um, and oftentimes training to training for some things such as virtual reality, boot camps, or um, to become utility developers, or even full stack development can range anything from 5,000 pounds and up, um, which can be quite hard. And also the lack of diversity and inclusion costs for a lot of companies is very high. So we're also targeting um, companies and helping with this issue as well. Next slide, please. So we have three core offerings. We have our Black Coda um, Full Stack Development Programme, which is a six month or 30 week boot camp, and that's done part time. So we offer um, coding and training skills for black women within the West Midlands looking who are either unemployed or career changes, and they don't need to be um, within a specific age bracket, as long as they're 18 and above, you're welcome to apply for this. We are actually currently taking applications um, for the Black Coda Bootcamp, so you're welcome to apply if you're interested. And what we're looking to do is empower Black women with the skills that would enable them to become full stack developers, um, using skills for in both front end and back end. Um, but we also know that a lot of people who have just finished our first, first cohort um, in February, have gone into roles in product management and also data analytics. So um, you're not just restricted to full stack development by doing the course. We also run an accelerator or will be running an accelerator for early stage entrepreneurs. So for those of you looking to get into business or have like a business idea but not show sure how to develop that. We run an accelerator bootcamp for this specifically, and it enables you to learn the, the core skills and the, the core understandings that would help you build a sustainable business, especially as an SME. And then also we are currently recruiting and we have open applications for our Black Disruptor Accelerator. We've partnered with Taran 3 d who are um, an amazing 3D design company. And we will be training um, women how to develop 3D and um, VR applications. So this ranges from industries in film to also gaming. So if you're interested in anything like extended reality, immersive technology, AR, VR, um, or data analysis, you are welcome to apply again. We are taking applications and you can head over to www.neoenterprise for more information about this. We're aware that 19% of digital tech of the digital tech force is female in comparison to 49% across all other UK jobs. But we also know that um, the number of black women in tech roles is still less than 2%. And so um, providing inclusive cohorts um, and men mentoring and um, training for these kind of roles is really our way of being able to support and empower black women or women of color um, looking to get into tech roles or looking to change careers. Next slide please. So we're currently in, um, in conversation and also partnership with a range of companies and we are um, look always looking for um, mentors and not just mentorship but um, business partnerships with um, employers who be able to help provide opportunities. Next slide, please. 
Um, if you are interested in applying to any of our boot camps, you can head over to the neo to neonetwork.com and apply that way. We are taking applications for our Black Coder boot camp for Black women 18 and above looking to get into full stack development um, or learn how to code. And then also we're running the Black Disruptor Bootcamp, which is for women interested in VR and 3D design. Thank you. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, that's fascinating to see. Um, and I hope you, uh, you get your open spaces filled up as quickly as possible. Um, so yes, share uh, wide and broad for that. That would be brilliant. So um, next, we're going to hear from um, the Tech Talent Bootcamp from Janice. Um, so I'll hand over Thank to you. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Matt. Um, first slide, please. Um, so, so hi everyone. I'm Janice Ray from um, Tech Talent, founder of Tech Talent. Um, I've been given 10 minutes to literally fly through some things of interest um, if you're looking for a career in tech. So here goes. Next slide, please. Um, OK, so we talked a little bit earlier about some of the, 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 the vast numbers of, of jobs in tech. Um, it's expected that there's going to be 100,000 tech jobs by June. And um, that number is going to grow exponentially in the future. So um, we are literally looking at a huge growth area. And the biggest kept secret is that there's literally no one to fill these jobs. That's the um, that's the size of it. We desperately need new talent into the sector. So tech is is the second um, highest growth sector behind healthcare only. In terms of the opportunities, if you want to reskill or change your career, this is an amazing opportunity. Um, and there are literally so many people like you doing this right now, so don't feel like you're on your own. Um, there, there are probably well over a million people now learning to um, upskill or reskill. So um, I can't really impress enough on you the, the um, importance of seizing the moment. Next slide, please. And these are the sectors that our students are coming from. A really wide range of different sectors. That's probably quite surprising when you look at tech. You think that you have to be Einstein to work in tech. You don't. <laughs> um, and it literally doesn't matter what you've studied or not studied. You don't need a degree. Um, if you are interested and you're keen, you can absolutely do this. Next slide, please. And here are some of the traits. So basically, all of the normal things that any employer in any sector would would expect from an employee. So, you know, at the top right, you'll see technical ability and mindset. But um, that really means being able to figure things out. It doesn't mean coding ability. It means do you like fixing things? Have you got that sort of um, have you got that sort of mind? Do you enjoy problem solving? Are you driven, self driven? Are you motivated? Um, I think the biggest thing here is what is is what's not on the list. You know, you notice that there's no degree in rocket science. There's no professor of nanoscience here, um, and that's because you can learn any new skill set. Actually, all you need is the will to do it. That is literally all you need if you want to move into tech. Next slide, please. So these are some of the courses that we're running at the moment. Um, so you see this month, there's three courses. Um, and then next month, there's another three courses. So a huge opportunity here to kind of jump in and strike while the iron's hot. Um, and, and there's loads of uh, different options. You know, you can study cybersecurity. You can study data engineering. You can do a cloud course with um, the AWS Restart program. And you can also do it part time or full time. So even if you're in work and find that it's impossible, you'd love to get into tech, but impossible to move out of a full-time role in order to upskill, we've got part-time courses to allow you to do that. And those are evening courses. So, you know, this month we've got an evening course in cyber, and next month we've got an evening course in cyber and data. So plenty of opportunities there for everyone. Next slide, please. OK, so we're getting down to the detail now about the funded opportunities. So we have got funded places. Um, and what that means is these places are free 
Um, and there's some criteria on the left hand side here for what constitutes um, a free play. So you need to live within the postcode area of the West Midlands. Um, you need to be able to commit to moving into a career in tech um, within three months of finishing your study. Um, that might seem a bit odd, but, but the whole point is this is a huge investment in you and we want you to get the jobs in tech. We don't want you to just do the training and not do anything with it. So it's all about the outcomes. That's what's really important. Um, you will need the right to live and work in the UK and have a national insurance number. But what I wanted to draw your attention to here was what's on the right hand side. So if you, you know, you can live anywhere in the UK, anywhere in the country, even in the West Midlands, and you can choose to pay for a course with other academy providers um, who are charging up to £14,000 for the space. Now that might sound like an astronomical amount of money, but it's the same courses. Um, so our course, our course per head, our student course, um, is valued at £10,000 per student. And these spaces are offered to you free. Um, they're literally gold dust. Um, it's a huge investment in your future from the West Midlands Combined Authority and also tech talent. So these spaces that are free to you, they might sound like, oh my goodness, it's a free space. You know, I don't know whether to do it or not. Um, probably not that important or not that worthwhile. It's a massive investment. Um, so please, please grab the opportunity wherever you can, because these are skills that are going to be needed in the future. And they will lead you into um, an amazing career path and much better airline potential. Next slide, please. So finally, why us? Um, so I set up Tech Talent to say, uh, to to support um, the underrepresented people in tech. So I've got a huge passion for tech as well. I learned to code um, in the dark ages, 1987. <laughs> and um, you know, I think that this group, I think women, people of colour, neurodiverse, unemployed and young people are at least half the population. And that's who we want to see in tech. And that's who the tech sector want to reach out to now. Um, we want you to have a great career option. We want you to have a great earning potential. And um, we're here to hold your hand to get you through the, the learning. Um, another important point to make is that you can study full or part time. So whatever your circumstances, we opened up a part time option so that if you cannot, uh, you know, you're not in a position to, to come out of work and study for 12 weeks full time, you can do it part time. We have an amazing employer network. So these are some of the employers we work with, Deloitte, Capgemini. Microsoft partners. We work really closely with um, Lee at Microsoft, and they have um, 28,000 part. I think it's 28,800 partners. <laughs> Lee, I hope I've got that right. But all of Microsoft partners are looking for students with skill set that we train. Um, we work with the AWS partners. So again, thousands of uh, companies looking for this new talent coming into the workplace. Um, and just some other names that you might know of that, that students work um, have gone on to work for. So Barclays, European Space Agency, Expedia. Um, and the last really important point is you come out of a tech talent course with a valuable qualification. So if you go in the cloud course, you come out as an AWS cloud practitioner. That's what employers are looking for. Um, if you go in the software course, you come out with an Agile certification and a Python certification. Um, on the data course, um, you'll learn all about AI um, and machine learning. You'll um, be able to go through the Microsoft Azure um, qualification and also a Microsoft AI engineer qualification, which is really super valuable. Um, on the cybersecurity course, you have cybersecurity qualifications. Um, and these are the things really that, as well as the skills you've learned, that will help you land uh, the great job at the end. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to say thank you for attending. Um, I hope it's been really worthwhile and it will help you to, to make a decision. Um, we'd, we'd love you to get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and hopefully this is the opportunity you've been looking for. So I'll hand you over to our next panellist now, uh, Claire Bickley. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Janice. Um, we've had some questions coming in, which we're, we're gathering for the end, um, but um, be assured that we will, we will get to those uh, as we move forward. So yes, 
Uh, Claire Bickley next with uh, EKIP, uh, going to talk about Code Your Future. Thanks so much, Matt. Uh, hi, everyone. Good morning. My name's Claire. I'm the Regional Manager for Code Your Future in the West Midlands, and I've got Ikip with me, who's uh, recently completed one of our courses. Um, so Code Your Future, in a nutshell, uh, we are a social impact charity uh, currently in the UK, and we have an international arm as well. Um, we offer, sorry, we build a community, we offer a positive learning experience, and we help people find a job. Next slide, please. We're open to various groups. Um, this can include refugees, asylum seekers, ex-offenders, uh, long-term unemployed, single parents, um, households living below the poverty line, disabled people, people risk, at risk of homelessness, um, all, all kinds of people. Anyone who's ever faced barriers to learning and particularly barriers to learning in tech, we want to do our best to remove those barriers. Um, it's a completely free nine month course um, that is part time. So we teach one day a week on a weekend and there's some independent study in the week as well. We offer a lot of support around this from our volunteers. There are buddy groups. Uh, we offer regular study groups and all, all of this. We want to do everything we can to support people so that by the end of the course they are job ready. What do we actually teach? It's a JavaScript course. We've heard from other JavaScript boot camps here. Very similar things that we teach, and we also um, offer the soft skills, the extra employability skills that we know people are looking for. We believe that learning to code is only part of what is needed to become uh, successful and in in this space and to get a job in tech. Um, we have a number of partnerships as well. Our main one is with Capgemini, who we'll be hearing from a little bit later, and they offer a lot of support through the course as well. Um, next slide, please. So, uh, I said earlier we, we want to remove barriers to learning as much as possible. How do we do this? Um, if you do not have a laptop, that is fine. We will help and we will provide a laptop. Um, if you um, don't have the internet that's fine we will pay for internet access we can support with funding towards childcare, and we can uh, we're all remote at the moment but were it to be face to face we would support with funding towards transport and we'd provide lunch on class days as well um, we understand that people have other things going on in their lives kids part-time work whatever it is so we want to support with that as much as possible you can still take part in our course if you have these things going on as I said we can help with laptops internet uh, funding towards childcare all these kinds of things anything that you need that you say you know this is a barrier for us then please talk to us about it we'll see what we can do we've had people recently who have um, had caring responsibilities as well and we're currently in discussions to see if there's anything we can do around that okay uh, next slide please so we have kind of two offerings we have our main full stack web development course as i said before it's nine months it's part time before that, though, there is a self-paced intro to coding course. This is also free to take part and it's self-paced so you can do this in your own time. That's absolutely fine. It takes a couple of weeks to complete and anyone who completes this is invited to interview for our full stack course. And just to say uh, we are accepting applications to our full stack course, which will be starting before the end uh, of the month. Um, Next slide, please. Great, so this is QR code which you can use to sign up. Um, I understand I've rushed through and it's very much a whistle stop tour, but I want to make sure I'm giving Ikip as much time as possible so he can tell you about his experience of Code Your Future. Thank you so much, Claire. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ikip Kalır. As Claire said, I graduated from Code Your Future Full Stack Web Development Bootcamp at the end of February this year, recently. And uh, to be honest, I feel so lucky, so lucky and grateful uh, to have this chance and met so many fantastic people. Uh, the program supports especially refugees and underrepresented people, as Claire uh, clearly stated. Uh, if I may give uh, talk about myself, uh, I came here to the UK 
uh, to represent my country in 2013. But because of the, the situation at that time, I couldn't return to my country. So we, we, stayed, uh, we decided to stay here and I found myself uh, as a refugee. So the program, and we have uh, many people with the same background, let's say, refugees, underrepresented people, black people, and all other. The program not only supports students in technical skills, but also in soft skills, like I would say, if I need to give uh, examples, teamwork, communications, networking, adaptability, problem, problem solving, and uh, continuous learning, I think which uh, all of these are very, very important to be job ready nowadays. Also, the program is free. Uh, it's very important. I mean, uh, the program in, in, in the same situation, I would say you, you need to pay maybe 8,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds. But for the, uh, for the people like refugees and underrepresented people, this might be a very, very big hinder. So uh, it is free. Also, Code Future supports students in a couple of ways, like uh, Claire said, like transportation fees, childcare fees, equipment. Uh, we did on Zoom, I mean, uh, remote uh, learning, but uh, it, it might change. And these all things uh, might be a, a big problem for the students. For me, the best part of the program, I would say, is the, the positive environment. And uh, the positive environment, I, I want to say, is that enable us to build up a network, uh, network and meeting new people. It's a very, very big, I mean, it's a big problem for the people, especially who are refugees and underrepresented. They can have some connection locally, but they don't have that network, uh, that much people they don't know. And uh, I think Code Your Future is one of the best place to build up a network, to meet new peoples. Also, uh, we really have uh, fantastic volunteers uh, they are all coming from tech industry all, or they are freelancer, but uh, they teach us with their hearts, I would say. And also, uh, I think the friendship, the feeling of community is the best part of the Code Your Future. You know, there are some people, they will listen to you, they will share your burden, they will share your difficulties. And all this, I mean, in a, it, it will endure like one year. So this is a fantastic uh, let's say, a uh, program that will support you and find uh, your dream job. That's all I want to say. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ikip. Um, and just to kind of say, to give you an, an idea, so our first class um, graduated in January. We had 30 people on that. And within 10 days, 70% um, of them, 21 people, had uh, interviews with Capgemini. And very happy to say that 10 of those will be started with Capgemini very, very soon. So that's really exciting. And we're looking at other opportunities as well. So we believe we've got a proven model here and we would love to invite you to join us in the future. Um, I think uh, Sally is going to talk to us now, sorry. Brilliant, thanks Claire. Um, and thank you, thank you very much for that, it's very interesting. Um, and if you didn't get a chance to snap the QR code, uh, obviously the details of these courses and how to uh, apply for them will be coming around in an email afterwards. So we're going to go over to Sally now and she's going to tell us about Cat Gemini. Hi everybody. Um, so so I, I work for Cap Gemini, which is a global IT services organization and we focus on um, trans helping our clients transform their businesses. So digital transformation is our core business. And I'm going to talk to you about our partnership with Code Your Future. So Claire and Ikip have, have given a, a good overview of, of how the class works. What I want to do is really talk to you about why Capgemini became partners with Code Your Future. So as I said, we are a, a global sort of digital transformation organization, about 270,000 people globally, eight, 9,000 in the UK. And my role is to work as part of our digital skills and social impact team. So I look after all of our activities working with different communities across the UK. And the reason we got involved with Code Your Future is interesting. It's very much about culture and some of the things that Ekip's been talking about in terms of the, the way that Code Your Future works. We're very similar organisations. When I first came to have a look at this particular challenge, Capgemini has got a good um, history, if you like, of running apprenticeships. So all of the things that 
people have been explaining today, we've got good apprenticeship programs, we work with some of the other bootcamp providers, so you might have seen Capgemini's name pop up on a few of the slides previously. So a really good and strong program in terms of creating routes into our business and also through our schools programs. But what I realised when I looked at it is if you were in a situation as ECIPS described um, and you didn't necessarily have O-levels or very basic UK qualifications, or you didn't have those networks, it was virtually impossible to get into a career with an organisation like Capgemini. Not because we didn't want you, but because we didn't know about you or you didn't know about us. And that was really the challenge that we set out to solve here, to really say, you know, what, what if we could make it possible for anybody from any age, any background, anywhere in the world, who has the attitude and the aptitude and the desire to work for an organisation like Capgemini, to come and join us. So that was our kind of exam question. And Code Your Future really, really fitted that mission, if you like. We found we were very similar in terms of our culture. We had a very sort of test, learn and adapt approach. So let's trial and, and see what works and then let's expand from there. So that fit was really, really quite strong very early on. So we started our partnership back in 2018 with a pilot class in London. And we have now um, done our second class in London. And as Claire said, the class in Birmingham graduated quite recently. And we're looking now to do a second class in London, Birmingham and in Manchester. So why, why has this worked for us or why has it been so successful? Um, and I'm sort of talking not, not just to, to people that might want to do the course, but also to any employers that are on the call, just to think about how you might want to get involved and, and also support with Code Your Future. So from, from our point of view, it was, it was really good that it was aptitude based in terms of entry, like many of the classes we've, we've heard about today. It was free, open to all ages. The flexible delivery was important because, as, as Claire and Ike have said, it's allowed us to mean it's accessible to everybody. Um, but the killer sort of key point for us from a Capgemini point of view is it was the portfolio based skills as well. So when I first started looking at this, we were very much looking at qualifications as an entry to Capgemini. Now we work very much on, on the portfolio and the projects that people develop through the course. Um, so that was why, why we sort of really liked the class, but, but also I guess how it worked was also important to us. So how the partnership comes together is what Code Your Future needed was volunteers, it needed job opportunities, um, and the energy of an organization like Capgemini, where we've got these 9,000 people that can help. What Capgemini was looking for were volunteering opportunities where our people could use their core skills as developers, but also as consultants, as marketeers. So opportunities to volunteer with an organization like Code Your Future was really important to us. So we've provided um, everything from trainers to deliver the classes, mentors, we host homework clubs for the students, we created a mini hackathon, um, just lots and lots of opportunities for our people as volunteers to support the students on their journey. But also the flip side of that was the students had the opportunity to get to know Capgemini. So Claire just talked about the number of um, uh, new recruits that we'll be having joining us very soon in, in the Birmingham area. A lot of that was sort of enabled by spending time together and breaking down some of those barriers, building a community and, and generally making it possible for the students on the class to get to know Capgemini and realise that it was a real opportunity and a real possibility for them to come and work with us. So where we've got to now is we've had um, seven students so across across the two classes in London and Birmingham we've had seven students that have been working with us now for 18 months and another 20 will be joining us or have joined us recently from the two classes 10 in London and 10 in Birmingham and it, it's not just about um, Capgemini recruiting the students it's about us al almost saying look this is an okay thing to do why wouldn't you so as an employer I think what we're seeing is is the commitment the talent um, and the, and the general attitude around saying, I want to carry on learning is really valuable to us. So Code Your Future students stand out to us as, as recruits because they've got the life experience, but also because the commitments. So some of the things we, we've heard before today, you know, that high level of commitment and desire to keep learning. So in our sector, 
things are changing all the time and there are all sorts of opportunities to keep developing and keep learning with us. So, so I've sort of galloped through all of this, but but we've had, you know, as, as I said, a number of people join us. We've had 300 or so of our people volunteer with Koja Future over the last two years. Um, and we're, we're, we're getting real diversity. So again, it's been mentioned, but some of the diversity that's coming into our organization is really starting to be recognized and valued by our clients when we're working on client projects absolutely important to our business teams because we know that the more diverse we are the more innovative and the more appropriate for our clients needs we are but also really really appreciated by our people who are really enjoying the experience of working with the students at code your future so that was really all i wanted to say matt just to sort of give a counter through why the partnership works for us it really is a two-way street so we're getting an awful lot out of it in terms of our our own people's development and massively rewarding in terms of seeing the success that the students get as they go through the course. Fantastic. Thank you, Sally. That's great. And um, <clears throat> you very generously, um, as a set of panellists, given us an additional five minutes to get through the questions that we have. Um, so I think it would be useful for, um, for us to go through these questions. I've tried to target them um, as we've gone along. Um, so when they've been asked in context, uh, so I will address them to the to the relevant panelists that they came up for, but that doesn't preclude anybody else chipping in. Uh, and there are one or two general questions as well, um, so it would be good to um, to just work through this. So I'll go back to the beginning. Uh, the first question we had was, um, I need a course or a workshop for digital skills, um, for example, using content management systems, um, uh, search engine optimization. Uh, and there's nothing out there. I've been looking for two years. Can you help, please? That's a general question. I'm not sure who to address it to. Would anyone like to pick it up? I'll pick it up. So, um, great question. And I think what would be quite good is if you go through the resources that were shared around the 10 learning pathways, what you might find is that within each of those pathways, there's different elements of what it is that you need. So I know you've been looking for a couple of years, but definitely if you go through, it might be that actually two of the two of the modules within one path are relevant, two of the modules within another path are relevant. I know that um, there's definitely lots of different variations within the project manager pathway, and also there's another one around kind of um, digital marketing pathways, et cetera. So it, it might not necessarily be that you'll get everything there, but I think that from a, um, a first kind of look, you'll be able to get some of the relevant information there. Brilliant. Thanks, Lee. Uh, anyone else want to add to that? Um, just conscious of time, so we'll, we'll skip along if nobody does. Great. Uh, so the next question um, was, my business will mostly focus on the global stage, and I really want to increase my knowledge using Zoom. And this is addressed to Lee. Uh, so, OK, perfect. Um, from my point of view, I would suggest that you use Teams. Um, but I suppose the question is around how is it that you effectively look at scaling um, through using the online platforms? And I think it's a case of really understanding who the audience is. So I'm not sure whether you have a business at this moment in time and who it is that what the business is and who it is that you're focusing on. Um, but a great way to actually engage is to use some of the other video platforms like, you know, in some of the sessions out there on YouTube promoting different articles, et cetera, and then actually following up several sessions like this where you're actually communicating to your audience through um, an online video platform. Um, I can't give you details specifically on Zoom, but I'm sure if you go out there and search it, you'll find the information. Brilliant. Um, I think uh, the, the, the pandemic has made uh, Zoom more of a catch-all for video conferencing. Um, so, uh, but yeah, there are other video conferencing providers, not least the one we're using now. Um, so yes, there, there is a, a range of them and uh, they are all very, very capable. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so the next question is, uh, I'm a full-time carer and would like to learn about digital um, world computer, but need training first on Zoom, etc. Could you please send details? I was wondering what would happen to a carer allowance when one reaches retirement age I used to teach relaxation and mindfulness, which I like to teach online. Please, um, can we talk about course and funding, etc.? 
So it's quite a broad question. I'm not altogether sure that it's it's highly aligned to digital skills, but I think that there's one around mashing skills um, and retraining in with um, other heavily distracting and and kind of temporally disrupted responsibilities, i.e. caring isn't a nine to five job, right? Um, I might be able to help with this one, Matt. So um, I, mentioned, I mentioned earlier that Koji Future can support um, offering kind of funding towards childcare. If you feel that this is a barrier and you want to take part in our course, then please do get in touch. We'll see what we can do to help. Um, as far as kind of, you know, carers allowance and things like this, what we would say is to talk to your um, kind of benefits advisor that you would have either at the job centre or through universal credit. Um, there is ways that you can get in touch with them. We um, work very closely with local job centres and Department for Work and Pensions. And as long as you're keeping them up to date, they have no problems with you taking part in, in our course, uh, particularly for people who are on job seekers allowance and universal credit and things like this. So as far as that goes, I, I would talk to kind of your, your advisor. Um, but yeah, if you would like to take part and you feel that this is a barrier, then we'll support as best we can. Brilliant. Thanks, Claire. Um, I think it is, uh, it, it kind of leads into another question, which I'm just going to go out of sequence uh, for just because it, it, it's associated. Um, how are we going to overcome the digital age gap for learning tech? For those over the age of 45, um, say, for example, me and uh, many others, who have not learned digital at school, cyber stuff is a dark hole, um, yet there are age groups that are going to be hit worst in terms of the after effects of COVID and thousands of additional jobs are going to be um, evaporating. So it's a good question in terms of um, age appropriateness, in terms of retraining. So people that have had jobs perhaps for a long time um, doing other things. How do we how do we overcome the uh, the boundary that um, is presented to people that haven't had that tech context growing up? It's a really good question. I don't know who who want to answer it. I'm sure there's all of you have got an opinion. <laughs> Um, I was actually going to say that for us, with the boot camps we've been running, um, because we've we've had people from like um, school leavers age 18 and to like 40 plus. Um, I think the eldest was on one of our boot camps was about 45 or so, um, and oftentimes they happen to be career changes. So what we've done is we've just set up extra sessions where we kind of um, go through the basics of being able to understand the sort of things that we would be um, speaking about on the course and I feel like this is um, a soft way of just reintroducing different technologies that we're using because we did find that even um, getting people onto Slack was an issue initially um, until they became familiar. So running just like taster, not taster sessions, but very brief sessions where you run through and um, record how to use certain um, technology is really helpful and it's really worked for us. Brilliant. I mean, from, from a WMCA perspective, in terms of the digital skills partnership and funding that we've been um, distributing over the last 18 months, you know, we've had a whole range of different types of um, criteria that we've been judging the learning providers against and some of them have been age specific but some of them have been not you know specifically looking for people to be able to be retrained from existing careers into new ones um, and you know we're very cognizant of the fact that there is a barrier there for, for the older workforce um, but we are committed to making sure that the funding that we've been providing and the onward support that we're going to be giving to the learning partners that we've 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 met and some of them you've, you've heard from on this session uh, is that, <clears throat> that there is a known challenge there and we do need to address it um, but the, the key thing from my experience and from the experience of, of, of many of my colleagues is it is about familiarity Lalo, as you said it's about using the tech getting to see how it operates and, and just dispelling that fear um, there's nothing to be afraid of. It is, you know, it is complicated and I still make mistakes, not least earlier when I moved straight into the next section rather than going to the questions for Rachel. Um, so, you know, human error is is always there. Technology, unfortunately, just makes it more painful. But as soon as you're used to it, it's fine and it's easier than you think. OK, um, so and the next question was, how do we obtain equivalent uni degree certificates to the ones granted abroad? Uh, or by universities abroad, it may is applying for the right job here. 
Um, so I think this is a question around um, equivalency of qualifications. Um, and it, I have some, some thoughts, but I'd rather let, let the panel decide um, how to answer this if they want to, about some of the boot camp providers. Anyone? Okay, well, I'll fill the void um, rather than get even more uncomfortable. Um, so for us, uh, the, the DSP, the, the, um, the focus has been on um, not funding qualification-based training. It's all been about um, real-life practical experience that these providers can, can produce. Um, and if you go back to the School of Code presentation and the um, Code Your Future type stuff, you know, those individuals are being taught not just the skills they need to be able to do the job, but actually also how they need to behave in those roles as well. And um, <clears throat> to some extent that for an employer is, is more important, but it, it's fair to point out that there is a challenge in, in, in a lack of certification or a lack of qualification coming along with these courses. Um, and some of those being filled with the certification approach where people have got a kind of piece of paper which says they've done this module, they've done that module to a certain degree, and therefore they have um, modular competence in the, in the skills that they need to do the job. So, you know, it is a known area of, of reticence. Employers, you know, will quite often, and much to my frustration, put degree essential in the, uh, in the job specification. Um, you know, we're, we're looking uh, as part of our funding model uh, to move away from that. And, and generally, as, as a nation, we don't have the time, all the resources, or even necessarily the uh, supply of candidates and grad uh, of, of undergraduates to be able to qualify everybody through a degree or higher education process. You know, we look, we, we have to take a very tactical approach as to how we begin to retool our workforce. And that is giving them the tools for the job, explaining how they need to, to work in those positions, and then getting employers comfortable with, with, with taking them up and, and effectively then um, bringing them into their businesses. Um, we're seeing some, some, some good progress on that in terms of the outturn from the, the schemes that we've funded. Um, but it is, it is an area that we need to, to put more effort in uh, from the employer end, but also from, from the kind of supply end in terms of pushing people into the market. Does anyone well, else want to add anything? Well, yeah, I, I would quite like, I mean, that was, I totally agree with you. So, so from us, the point that I made about portfolio based outputs from the Code Your Future class and also the work that we put in through our volunteers and, and support of the course around the soft skills we do recruit on on skills based so so, so we do an assessment of behaviors we're not looking at those qualifications specifically and that's why the partnership with code your future has been so successful for us because actually what we're really interested in is those behaviors and the attributes around continued development and learning so so absolutely in that space i think for us for all the reasons you've outlined i just wanted to reiterate as well actually what sally's just said um Matt, in regards to the fact that hiring now is going to be skills based irrespective of whether you've got a degree from abroad or you've got a degree here you've got qualifications it's going to be on the skills that you have and you can improve those skills and i think what's important actually is to understand the skill set that you have and then matching that to potential careers and opportunities. You may have a skill set within customer service, but 70% of those skills can actually be transferred into a different career and a different job. So making sure that you understand what your strengths are, understand where you need to improve, and then actually focus on those areas, kind of get your head down, and therefore that's what the employer is going to see. If you've got that motivation and dedication to actually look at yourself and the skills that you have and where it is that you need to improve the likes of you know sally's organization and others will be looking for individuals like you brilliant thanks lee uh we've only got a couple of minutes left i'm afraid before the session is going to close and there is unfortunately no way we're going to get through all of the remaining questions um i will try and pick out some of the ones which um are very relevant to the uh to the content that we've had but don't forget uh, all of the presentations uh, and the links that have been provided to the resources you've seen are going to be wrapped up and emailed out to all of the people that registered for this course uh, sorry for this webinar so that they will be sent out on monday next week hopefully um, so 
uh, th there's one question here, which is, um, I'm an eligible, uh, sorry, my question is, I'm eligible as a person of colour with a visa to live and work in the UK, able to attend any of these free courses. Uh, I'm asking because I've applied for an apprentice in the past with the WMCA and was disqualified because I wasn't eligible as I haven't got indefinite leave to remain. Um, so that's uh, an interesting question. Would somebody like to try and answer that one in terms of their, their perspective? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I could take that one um, for sure. I mean, to be eligible for the Code Your Future course, um, you know, we've we've had asylum seekers on our courses, so you don't actually need to have the right to work to take part in the course. You can still benefit a lot from what we teach and being part of the community. So kind of visa status for us to be accepted to the course, it's it's fine, it's fine. And I mean, the other thing as well is just like, we're open to complete beginners as well. You don't need any coding experience beforehand or anything. So, you know, don't don't worry about, about that either. Um, we understand that there's a number of people who join our course and uh, circumstances change, visas might change as you're studying, but we'll do whatever we can to help and signpost you to support organisations. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Claire. Well, that unfortunately brings us to the end of the time we have allocated for the webinar. Um, I hope you found that useful, all of you that have attended, and um, I'm very pleased to say that there are a significantly large percentage of you still on the uh, on the session from those that started, so that's fantastic news. I hope you've enjoyed and got some stuff out of that. For those of you that asked any questions, we'll try and endeavour as much as possible within the email to answer any of those that um, are specific enough for us to do so, either with links um, or, or uh, some, some summary information. But thank you all very much for your time, panellists especially, um, and I look forward to perhaps running something like this again in the future. Um, and hopefully uh, we, we will all um, continue to drive forward in the area of digital skills and getting the West Midlands up there where it belongs uh, as leading uh, in provision of those kinds of resources. So thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.